Right, welcome to FMA Discussion. This is episode 215, and tonight we have the pleasure of having Tuhan Apollo. He's come highly recommended. We've been in chat since last summer, but he's a very busy man, and we finally got us to get our wires crossed and make this happen, and I'm so excited. Um, Me too. I believe he has a business model that I think is going to be replicated. I think, I think it's the model for FMA industry, and we're going to get into all that, and I have my with me the co-host with the co-most, Guru Tom Pena. Good evening, so, everybody. Good evening to Hanna Polo. Good evening, Dean. Good evening, good sir. Here. Sir, good, good evening. Well. Thank you for having me. Oh, my, my pl our pleasure. Uh, yeah. okay. Definitely our pleasure. Pleasure yeah. is all mine, sir. And I apologize for how long it took us to get together. Oh, you know what, though? Better late than never. So I'm pretty easygoing. And um, so all good. All good. Good. That um, makes two. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so, folks, if you were watching, please tell us where you're watching from. Smash that like button. We just got started and uh, we got a bunch of questions and answers. He's going to share with us his journey, his business model, what makes him so successful, his kids program, and he has a demo as well. And uh, stay tuned for that. So, again, we're just getting started. So we're going to jump right into it. We already got 12 people watching. My goodness. All right. Hey, awesome. Good evening, Lots guys. <laughs> good evening. So there's Master Ace. Good morning. Hello, sir. <laughs> all right. Yeah. So again, I want to thank you for coming on. So before we jump into FMA, what was your, you know, your kind of um, your pre-FMA, you know, what, what were you involved in? So uh, I started off in the martial art doing uh, Taekwondo. So I have a... Um, Basically, I have a lot more experience in Taekwondo than I do with FMA. I started off with the Taekwondo. And um, back in when we first came here in the Philippines, I mean, from the Philippines in the 70s, um, there was a, my instructor, my Taekwondo instructor lived not too far from the house. He always passed by the house with the yellow van. And I can still give you the phone number. It was four 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 one 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 one. A van. I heard a van. He so, can still remember it. Yes, he's down by the river. He's two blocks away from <laughs> where we live, and then um, he, his van passed by all the time. My brother and I, Tohon uh, Babi Ladra, and my younger brother Emil, um, we all wanted to do martial art. We were all a big fan of the martial art, and then we said, "Oh man, that would be cool." We can go there. So. Again, we're, we're poor. So when we got there, it was only like, you know, they have to give us a discount so all three of us can can train. So we all train in Taekwondo. Um, we all reach our instructor's level, all three of us. At one point, we were all running schools, all three of us. Huh? Yeah. Oh, wow. At one point, we had like, um, I had like six schools, wow. six schools. And we were also working for my instructor at that time. But uh, after about a year, you know, my parent, my dad couldn't afford to put all three of us and my Korean instructor, uh, Grandmaster Kim, uh, J. Kim, uh, he offered me, he goes, hey, you can come in after school, clean the school, and you can mm -hmm. train for free. Oh, okay. So okay. that's how I started. And then he teaches, uh, back then in the 70s, mostly adults are taking classes yeah um not kids so i started working mm -hmm. with some of their kids in the back on the lobby and mm -hmm. that's how all the, me teaching kids got started next thing we know kim's kim's karate it was called back then we ended up having 57 locations that i had wow. I help open up those schools um mm -hmm. teaching training instructors doing the whole nine yard um help some of the negotiating, translating some of the negotiation and things like that. And that really got me started onto, and I was at this time, I was in my teens. I was actually 14 when I started uh, teaching at the school, teaching kids, just working, just keeping the kids quiet. And that's <laughs> yeah, I get them to do Job right cross there. kick, I get them to do some yeah. kicking. Yeah. So where is located? I'm sorry, Tuan. Where was, started. I'm sorry, Tuan. Where is this located? This was in Baltimore. Baltimore. Okay. 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 Good old Baltimore. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Not so good anymore. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, even back, back then was worse. It's great now. 
Is that right? Oh, really? Well, imagine coming from the Philippines and yeah. I. Oh, uh, okay. okay. Yeah, I'm from Batangas, man. I'm from uh, Tanawan, Batangas. All right. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, going to a ghetto, Baltimore, it was like a Beverly Hills compared to where we're from. <laughs> wow. I mean, yeah. So, no, it's actually great. One thing that. Okay. We, yeah. So that's how it all started. And then. After you know, um, helping my instructor cleaning the room, helping him teach kids and things like that. That's how. Uh, and then I asked him if I can get my two brothers back, and mm. we all started training back. And that are <clears throat> to doing martial art. Just started from there. We all became instructors. We taught for our grandmaster, all three of us at one time, and then I left and started my own in 1990. 1990, your own Taekwondo school. Okay. Uh, old Taekwondo school, but during that time, my brother and I, Bobby, we were already uh, attending seminars, um, like um, Filipino martial arts seminars. From what triggered that? Well, I mean, um, do I, like, we, okay, what triggered that is that <laughs> we have pictures in our basement of Bruce Lee, Bruce Lee's uh, picture, and then we. Um, we have a collection of magazines, the Black Belt magazine, the okay. uh, Karate Illustrated magazine, yeah, and then okay. the magazine that Grand Tohon Liu Gahe was on the front cover. Okay, yep, yep, okay. And you know, and, and the thing was, my that day that, that now when we were looking at that, I said, no, one day, that was my dream. My dream was always to get in front, to be in front of Black Belt magazine, or, or mm. magazine. Um, and at that time in my head, it would be doing doing Taekwondo because that's what I was doing. I was more focused mm -hmm. on the Taekwondo. And uh, we were uh, just training whenever there's a seminar around for FMA, Filipino martial art. That's what we do. We do it as a secondary art at that time. We got to host. And then when I opened up a school, we ended up hosting. Uh, we got to host uh, Guru Den. Or to Honden, on the Santo, yeah. Edgar Solete, Edgar Solete. Wow. We got the. Oh wow! I didn't know that. Mike oh. and I. Um, let's see, um, Grandmaster Estelila. Okay. The Bobby Tabuada. Oh, you oh. name it. We hosted everyone, and then, you know, during that time, um, that was my way of trying to see, or select who I'm gonna follow. Seminars, yes, sir. Gotcha. So what they do is we fly them in. They come in on Thursday, Friday, um, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Thursday, Friday, <laughs> will, my brother and I will get private lesson. Yeah. Uh, that what they're gonna teach our students because we're mm. event. So that way we're familiar with what they're gonna show their students. So if they ask us, you guys will have some assemblance. Yeah. 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 And, yeah. Yeah. Also during that time. Um, we wanted to make sure that when they teach our students that we can at least help them out also mm. they it first. Sure, sure. Okay. So that's what we were that's what we were doing. And um and that's how all of this got started. Wow. So just when you're doing the seminar circuit and all that, you know, like I mean what res you know, I mean obviously you're heavily taekwondo based. Mm -hmm. You want to tap into your own culture, your own martial art. You know what if right you know i'm not sure if you had in the first seminar but like what really clicked with you like what i okay. mean what, i mean were you amazed by like what you were seeing and what and all that as far mm -hmm. as your own art is concerned okay so how about this baltimore <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, when that. you play basketball when you, yeah. play, you know, when you play basketball a lot of times playing basketball you at the, at the end it always end up to a fight Basically, Even yeah. <laughs> and at the same time, I went to I went to a school. It was a it was a pretty rough school, where mm -hmm. you know you're gonna get into a fight. So my thing mm -hmm. was with the taekwondo, with the kicking, and we didn't do a lot of hands. Yeah, right? yeah. I, wanted yeah. yeah, yeah. I wanted to supplement. So what we did actually in the very beginning is like I told my brother because we're in the same weight class, we're in the same. Mm -hmm. uh, my brother and I, um, so I said, oh, I focus on Taekwondo and 
you go ahead and start focusing on Kali, on the Filipino mm -hmm. martial arts. Okay, so all right. right. We're both, we have the weaponry and then we have the stand up. And I focus more on doing a little boxing here and there, doing different uh, martial art just to enhance my empty hand. <clears throat> uh -huh. And then, um, but the bottom line is, you know, weapon. Mm. I was more, I was always been intrigued with uh, Blade. So that's part mm -hmm. of the reason why mm -hmm. I, I got attracted to all the people that used to come to our school and give seminars. Like um, one of the first one that really got introduced, how I got introduced to uh, Pikiti was um, uh, Pamana Tuhon Sayo. Back in the day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. He, he, that's about every other weekend or every weekend, twice a month, they were here at, at my school. And, and what year? Just to circa about what year? This is in the 90s. Wow, because that's when I was with him, late 90s. Late 90s. I remember him saying he, he used to go to Maryland, and I'm guessing it had to be your that place. Was us. He used to go yeah. to us. Yeah. Oh, I remember the big nine video done in Maryland. Yes, at that time, my brother and I were training with him. Uh, also, the so Kayanan, Tuhon Kayanan, the Kayanan brother, mm -hmm. and Tuhon like Ricardo, and Raphael, Felix Cortez, Rico, yeah, yeah, the yeah. whole Tom Tire, the whole, yeah, yeah, wow, yeah. So, we go way back, um, um, with you know, with our Filipino, but we're always, I'm always involved in it. I, yeah. I'll take lessons, and then on the weekend, since I'm running a school. That was mm -hmm. my brother, um, Tohon Bobby, would handle the weekend. And then I'll get a break because from teaching 13 classes a day, I mean, we had like over, at one point, we had 1,200 members, students in our wow. schools at one time. Yeah. Cool. Wow. Yeah. 13 yeah. Class. Wow. So we got to learn the whole, how the evolution of the Taekwondo, how the Taekwondo became. Uh, you know, we were We were in that. Yeah. Mm. Learning. Yeah. And then during that time, I would follow whoever is the top instructors. We will either invite them here or I'll go travel and, and follow them. Got it. Got it. So like in 1990, I got to be, I became part of the West Coast demo team with <clears throat> Reyes. Mm -hmm. uh, right. Okay. okay. Yes. I got to be part of that whole, uh, their first mastery tests. Oh, okay. So I got to be part of that. Uh, that was a, such a great experience. It took mm. everything that I learned in terms of teaching, yeah. uh, also in really creating that positive environment, you know, in the class, around you. I really learned a lot of that from Kwan Jinnam Ernie Reyes Sr. Wow. Ernie Reyes. Yes. And about, especially their teaching. Wow. So when you're okay, so you're having these seminars, you're, you're getting different people in, you're seeing what really resonates with you, where you want to really dial in and go deep. Into you obviously chose PTK. Uh, why? Um, you know, it was uh, for me, it was a uh, blade. Uh, it's that's the blade blade. Blade. Yeah. why we ended up with in the very beginning at that time. Um, the Hyundai was in the Philippines, uh, and I'm already researched all the research that I've done. What you know, it always pointing me to to Grant to Hongahe. But at that time, he was in the Philippines. He spent a lot mm -hmm. of time in the Philippines, and then so we train. Uh, and then with the Sayok, it's all Blade at that time. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah, it was all blade, yes. I, if you train with him, you remember that it's all Blade. All Blade all the time. I loved it. I yeah. love. I love doing the Blade. Yeah, so yeah. I wanted to understand uh, mm. the Filipino martial art through the blade because the okay. common den I took all the common denominators that everyone is preaching. It was, mm -hmm. you know, we used to stick like it's a blade, mm -hmm. right? That's what it was, you know, everybody's common denominator is, oh, you know, everything that we do is, is transferable to blade. And right. we move the sticks like it's a blade. They tell us to, when you're here, um, when you hit with the stick, you know, um, this resembled mm. when you hold the blade, it resembled the blade. So yeah. It comes up. So right. I'm like, if I'm going to train and I want to learn the blade, which is the most common thing back then that you see 
get used. And at that time, I believe even I think what what on my head how I got involved in learning how to protect you know uh, myself with the blade is I remember at that time watching on television when um, First Lady Imelda Marcos mm. attacked with a machete. Oh yeah, when 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 she was uh, yeah, yeah, there was an ambush attempt yeah. as, attempted assassination. Yes, oh, right, the assassinate, and I was like that got that was stuck on my head. Wow, like, wow. I have mm -hmm. all this martial art background, but one thing that's missing is weaponry. Is weaponry? Yeah. 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 So yeah. you know, we start. My brother and I started. You know, uh, we're training partners. Mm -hmm. Then we started training, and then. All the people that I posted here, one of the person that kind of what put me towards Grant Tohongahe at that time was because he, when our first year with him is basically just training, fighting. That's all we did was sparring. Mm -hmm. Sparring, okay. What attracted me is the footwork. Mm -hmm. doing, doing, having yeah. the taekwondo background, so mm -hmm. like, you know, uh, make him miss, make him pay. Type thing, sure. footwork, angling, yeah. Um, you know, all the top fighters in the world, most common denominator is footwork. Footwork. Yeah. Got yeah, from Muhammad Ali. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sugar Ray Leonard, who mm -hmm. I had the opportunity of meeting a lot because he's from Maryland. Um, his nephew actually got a black belt from me. His oh, son. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So his son trained with me. So I got to actually see them, and he was there for the black belt testing. Mm -hmm. Um, then um you know i got to see how everyone was promoting and i love going to the seminars but i leave i couldn't remember a thing <laughs> you know and here i am i'm already an overload yeah, it, it, that, and i was also an instructor already so i know how to dissect things but i'm mm. dealing with and that's why i my brother and i will attend seminars Hey, just remember this. I'm gonna remember this part. Yeah, you remember the first half. Remember that. Yeah. And then we, we, yeah. put, we put it together. Yeah. So that's really how we started until uh, I went and talked to Grant Hongahe, and he was in Delaware at that time. Delaware, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then I came up to him and I said, "Look, sir, we've been looking and waiting to chat with you, and I, I like to train with you because everyone that I did a research, they point to." point me to that direction because I wanted to mm. uh, because I wanted to learn the blade got and it, I, we were still during that time we were still hosting um, Grandmaster Bobby Tabwada so are you still hosting everybody else oh, yeah that. super oh yeah mm -hmm. we're still hosting while we were still you know while we we're training while you were while yeah, you we're always a big supporter of everyone um, that's yeah. really nice that's really nice. And you know what my thing was, besides, I want to learn the Filipino. I want to learn from everybody, see what they have to offer, number right. one. Two, I also want to learn what ca what are these people doing that captivates people, that make people from all over the United States fly to our Why seminars. Why am I see, see this individual, right? You know, and it was, and because being involved in the martial art industry, it was something unique about the filipino martial art um, it was practicality yeah. than when they were teaching you know in terms and then the weaponry yeah um, no, definitely yeah. on top of that it's like every single one of them had the great charismatic personality that yeah. makes you that makes them stand out you know exactly yes yeah they, that's so true yeah. you, you hit something there like per the, like you know, like for instance, I didn't spend a whole lot of time with Tuan Sayak, but he was very charismatic. Yes. I yeah. mean, mm -hmm. always had a kind word to say to you. I mean, yeah. you know, you could have sucked that day, like miserably. Yeah. But he would have been like, you know, I mean, like at the Sama Sama, like always a kind word, just really. Um, so, yeah, there's something about the personalities. Uh, yeah, I think that's that's yeah. what makes them like good, great teachers, actually. Yeah. Inspiration. Yeah. Very approachable talk. You yeah. can talk to them. There wasn't that like wall, mm -hmm. that visible, invisible wall where you couldn't go up to them. Like very mm -hmm. talk. I think know? the most common denominator based on my, um, based on, on, on my, just from watching, learning yeah. from all of them, besides their charismatic personality, is their the positive the positive mental attitude that they have and the way they look at things they look at things mm -hmm. in a positive way as opposed to negative and i love that yeah. and you know yeah. all my training in the martial art every instructors that i had 
uh, they always use that positive uh, because they work with kids. So they're always have to be you know, positive, positive, always around, surround myself with positive people. Yeah, right. You don't want to be around anybody negative, man. You're not going <laughs> to. And, and you know what? And I watch them become successful in what they do because of that. So I watch mm. the trait that they use to become successful. And I just, you know, my whole thing is that to get somewhere, you role model people that's already there. Yeah. Yes. Now you got to exactly. That, yeah. And I role model all these instructors that we brought here and how their personality, how they get mm. them to be. They're so detailed that makes people go, wow, I never thought of it that way. Right. Mm. right. Another one so detailed and go, man, that connected the dot. Mm. Mm. Another one yeah. was so connect, man, that would that would work. That makes mm. my what I'm doing, the way I, what I'm doing is I really it made me realize that I'm missing something on my art. Yeah. Um, you know? Mm. So I did all of that. And then after learning all of that, I'm like, you know, one of the, and it's be, it, not nothing against all the other masters that have, I mean, they all have their own positive things that they have to offer and they're mm -hmm. all great at what they do. Mm -hmm. What makes me, what attracted me to Gran Tohon was that the, it was just, it. it's a personality thing. It was just, we, it was just more preference. I prefer him not because the others are not great oh yeah right right something the way he, with preach, you. It, the way he preach it fits my personality mm -hmm. yeah and definitely something really uh, resonating yeah. but it doesn't mean but i still continue supporting the others and mm -hmm. learning from them oh no no i, I and it, was, I, yeah. it was the blade it was the blade yeah, i think yeah. out of all the people that preaches the art i think he was the one that really focused more on the blade and the blade is comparatively speaking uh, than the others. No, I mean, something really clicked with you. And you saw that was the yeah. thing that with me is the blade. So that's what I thought. No, 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 absolutely. I mean, it's it's, yeah. it's with everybody. Something clicks and you, you just want more yeah. of it. Yeah. So yeah. My, my whole concept about when I was fighting is fighting is only fun when it's always your time, right? <laughs> and then I met Grant Hongahe. He's the first person that said, you know, when you're fighting, you have to be offensive, counter-offensive, re-counter-offensive. Hey, yes. that's the thing is fight, you know, fighting it's only fun when it's always your turn, right? That's true. <laughs> like parallel to the way I learned the stand-up and the way I learned the martial art, it parallel the way he was teaching it. Mm. And I was just so fascinated with this. He's like to me, he was just like a freaking magician with the blade. Oh, that's awesome. That's just awesome. the way he moved the blade. Even now, yeah. even now at age. Yeah, even as I mean at the age he's at, right? I mean, pretty mm. bro. We got a bunch of folks here. I was just like to just to say hello to everybody that's yes. here, to Oh, just yes, sir. Um, first, there, we'll we'll get the list now. Guys, oh God, thank you guys so much for here. being here. Hey, so to see Mr. Garrett. Mike Martin. Morris. Martin. Oh, oh my God, we got uh, FMA. Hey, they, they, they're Crompton from Australia. Thank you. Yeah, MD. Uh, we got Nemo. California. Australia. We got Sachi, New Jersey. We got Chef Miami. Darren Stockton, we got wow. Richard from Maine. That was a New York first person from Maine. Hello, oh, sir. And nice. uh, Frank from Connecticut, mm -hmm. Joe Apostle, the ever living clown. <laughs> we got King, we got Dekan, yeah. we got Mike Morris, yeah. Emmanuel from France. Hey, Chris yes. Ramirez. Hey, just, close, just hooked up with him on Instagram today. Mark, MD, Morgan. Tom, yeah. Oh, there's the one. Bobby. Bobby. Oh my God! For the um, for the FMA discussion, guys are uh, here. Yes, sir. <laughs> we got Spencer uh, G. D, uh, Mr. Dean, sir. I hope yep. you, don't, you don't mind. I'm gonna say I see some a lot of uh, Filipinos. I just want to say kumusta. Oh, please do. Oh, yeah. Sa inyo lahat and salamat for um, yeah, salamat for lahat ng support. For our uh, Filipino martial art, maraming salamat sa inyo lahat. Thank you. Thanks everyone for um, tuning in and uh, listening to uh, to uh, Dean. And I tell you, uh, what they're doing is um, great. It's, it, this is great for FMA, and I think we all have the same mission, same common denominator is to really promote the Filipino martial art. And I think everyone that's here, I think that's um, that's. Uh, 
you know, if we keep pushing that, I think that's going to be, it will be, it's just a matter of time. There's still a lot of stuff that we're working on. Hopefully mm -hmm. we can help and contribute to the growth of FMA worldwide. Absolutely. Thank wow. you so much. And uh, thank you so much for the keyword. Yes. If you have not subscribed to FMA discussion on YouTube, we give all our money to charity. You'll be helping. You will be helping. People. Yes, you'll be helping people in the Philippines. Uh, yeah, that's awesome, sir. That's great. Yeah. I'm actually planning. We're planning a mission. We got to do a mission. Mr. Raymond Floro, Mr. Yeah, that's the mission of FMA discussion to help people in the Philippines. Mr. Nantel, and we got Ferd here. All right, all right, all right. Hey. Um, okay, so Raymond Floro is there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, Raymond Floro. Yeah, Raymond Floro, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Nantel. Um, what, uh, okay, so all right, you're, you're so you, you you kind of explained to us why you chose PTK and, and all that. And so you've been in it, so I'm gonna guess early 90s, yes, sir. I think, yes, it's getting close to let's see, uh, actually, Grant Thorne and I were talking about that the other last week. Um, is that it's been it's pretty close to 30, 30, almost goes, going on 30. Said, yeah, yeah right. We're two thousand and yeah, right. Okay. Mm -hmm. so, so all right. So when um so when you start, I know that you the you, so you mentioned why you kind of chose and right like you mentioned like the footwork really resonated with you. Right. The fact of the blade, uh -huh. you obviously connected with him as a person and a teacher. Yes. Mm -hmm. So what did you continue to see through your evolution bef and all that that really kept you there? Like what you know. What um, you you know, um, I went to college here, uh, and my brother and I, we were all going to college for engineering. Uh, Grant Tohon Gahe really had a way of explaining things in a way that, um, you know, that I can understand it in my, and that's the way he teaches. Whatever you can understand, he will teach it to you that way. Like how he taught, as you notice, a lot of the Tohon and Pikiti, they all move differently. They yeah. all move different yeah. things. Because he is known for that. Like, whatever he sees from you, he's going to take That's that. That's how he capitalizes it. Exactly. He capitalizes yeah. on that and mm -hmm. work with you so that you can understand and represent him in that way that you would know how to express yourself. Mm -hmm. And so the, you know, in terms of all the subsystem, he basically you know, he knows which one based on what he had in mind and which one you're going to excel on okay. based on mm -hmm. how you move and based on how you talk to him. Yeah. With the personal relationship that you have with yeah. him. Yeah. Um, and the thing is, I, if I really, and I said to myself, if I really wanted to learn his art, I really have to be close to him or learn how he yes. thinks. So that way mm. I can get the methodology, the concept. Exactly. Not exactly. Just yeah. Yeah. So um, the time that I met him, after that, he goes, see me in the Philippines. Mm. If you're really serious about training with me, see me in the Philippines. So I went to the Philippines. As a matter of fact, the time that I went there, it was Ron Kraskowski uh, was there. Bernie, oh, okay. we were, we were some of the old timers. Yeah, some of the old timers. Yeah. <laughs> we were all there. We had, a, we had a great time. It was a great trip. And then mm. we actually... I mean, when Grant Thohan says, you know, I need you to do 5,000 strike on the water, he was in the front leading. So one of the things that I learn in the martial art is always by leading by example. Yeah, so right. because yeah. As a result of him. Okay. Yeah. One of the things yep. that made me, one of the things that made me fall in love with the way he teaches and the way he preached the Pikiti was that he lead by example. I you know that they're, do, they're doing it with you man if they're in the trenches yeah. with you yeah man. i got to meet him when he was in his 50s when he's on my age mm -hmm. you know 20s yeah right yeah going, going 20s. back to the <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 20s thanks <to> <laughs> okay. but that was the thing it's like when he said when he was teaching us how to spar i mean he would spar with us you know he would say mm -hmm. oh you use this when he does a technique and he use it i mean he goes this is how you will use it so you spar and then he lead by example so mm. I got to I got to feel it and whatever yeah. I thought I use it I would use it on him the next time we see each other. Mm. So that way mm. that's how I can tell what's next. Mm. And part of it okay. me offense, mm. counter offense, I would use the offense on him so that mm. way he would use the counter offense and yeah, yeah, yeah. We will go if I don't if I didn't get it because it's a one on one, 
If I don't get it, I have to try it again. Whatever he takes me, I would take it there so I can see how he counters. And I then get it, it's that's what he used to call me a thief. I know what you're doing. He called <laughs> me a thief. That's what he's doing. He said I'm trying to steal the move. Okay. Next. Instead yeah. of waiting. Yeah. And I always tell him every time he tells me that, I said, I, I got a good teacher. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right, right. It's already back down. <laughs> or if it doesn't, you know, if I can't get it, then Bobby will be watching, my brother will be watching, and then he will get it, and then vice versa, and then we'll practice together. Yeah. And then we'll practice together and work on it together and use one of That's those to do Between the two of you. Yeah. So. Two yeah. on, I got a question here. Yes, sir. From, um, I got a question here from Joe. Actually, a pretty good one. Could you share with us the bits about your relationship with GT, how it's unique, and your time with him in the USA with you? So, okay. Okay. Um, so at first, you know, just meeting him, I we chatted with him, and then after that, we went to the Philippines. I got to spend a couple of months with him in the Philippines, and then right after that, um, we kind of developed a good relationship. And then when he came back, when I went back to to US. He followed me. He said, yeah. okay, a week later, he goes, I'm going back. He said, I'm going back. He didn't have any okay. seminars set up. Mm -hmm. he goes, he's, he's coming back with you. <laughs> and because I ran a martial arts school at that time. Yeah. And so, I mean, he stayed with me. He actually, every whenever he's not doing a seminar, he's usually staying with me. And at that time, um, I have a flexible schedule. I have yeah. a school. Mm -hmm. I'm at school full time. So... I tell you, that was uh, some of the grueling training that I've, we, my brother and I have done with him. So he would wake up at five in the morning or four in the morning. We we'll start training. Wow. Start at he eight or four in the morning, man, I'm yes. crying. At that time, I was heavily into <laughs> yeah, I was heavily into weightlifting because it's on Filipino time. Oh, you know, I, I, the Philippines I, time. You, so, yeah, I would, wow. and, but I was used to just getting four hours sleep from being in college and teaching. Mm -hmm. and, so I was and working. So I was used to that. Then, um, you know, he would stay with me bas predominantly, basically most of the year. Whenever he's not teaching, he's not doing mm -hmm. seminars. And then after the seminar, he will come back, and I will get him yeah. off. Life. And then he will stay with me, and then we'll train from. This is our schedule. Whenever he was with me. It was four in the morning. We would start training, me and him, until eight o'clock. And then I would go to the gym and lift weights because I used to be heavily into bodybuilding. All right. Thank you. I used to be a personal trainer. All right. We would, I would lift for an hour and he would go to the gym and sit, hang out at the, um, and he would <laughs> hang out at the lobby, read and watch newspaper. It. Yeah, no, read <laughs> newspaper. I'm just kidding. And then, yeah. And then, oh, there's sometimes that he does just watch. He goes, why do you do that to yourself? You don't need that. Yeah, yeah. He goes, you just need this. <laughs> yeah, why, why are you focusing? Like, uh, yeah. So, that. Then that. after that, um, I have a class at 10 o'clock. Mm -hmm. I have a class at 10 o'clock at the school. And then I have 11 o'clock class, a 12 o'clock class. And then during my class, He'll be taking naps. And then after that, my brother usually get into school around 11 or 12. Then we're trained with GT until 4 o'clock. Because 4 o'clock, we start teaching Taekwondo until 9. Wow. Then 9 o'clock, while I'm teaching, he's in my office sleeping. <laughs> so at 9 o'clock. Getting his power nap. Yeah, the rest of my players, <laughs> like uh, all the fighters that we had at that time, we had a group of fighters that really just trained mainly for just the full contact button, yeah yeah to represent uh gt so they will come in at 8 30 9 o'clock is after everybody leaves and then we'll start sparring until we'll train until 11 or one o'clock in the morning and do it all over again the next day oh wow okay? i mean there was one point that he stayed with me for about six months and that's all we ah. did yeah so i think all together probably and uh like until he got really busy and creating his own, you know, his seminars, uh, like every week, once, twice a month, three times a month. He usually spent anywhere from four to six months out of the year. Like oh wow, so no wonder. So you got obviously you and your brother yeah. got. Yeah, so brother, you know, yeah. I know, and I would like you know, and the way he teaches, he teach whatever comes to his mind, mm -hmm. you know. So what I do is whatever he gives us something. 
you know, I because me, I was uh, in Taekwondo. I used to create curriculums in Taekwondo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You used so to that, that was my specialty is curriculum. Mm -hmm. Um. So okay, what he just taught us to belong to here. Oh, and, so you were able to compartmentalize it and make curriculum. Yeah. Okay. Yes, and my brother and I, we both have a book of the stuff that we learned. And then whenever we have questions, we will yeah. ask questions during while we're eating. And GT is known that. You know, when we go to a Chinese restaurant, you have those uh, placemat, right? With all the horoscope. He yeah. would turn around, he would draw the triangle, and this is why we call this tri V angle. This is why you hit this way. This is, and that's how we understood the art the way he explains it. Oh, now. Fascinating. Oh, wow. There's tons of people out there that hung out with GT when they're doing seminars, but he does the same. Wow. wow. What my brother and I would do would go like this. Uh, Oh, that's good. Now I understand, sir. Now we'll go like we will go like this. Sir, would you mind writing your name there and put the date over here? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. would, you, would you mind? Would you mind signing? Oh this? yeah. Oh, we used to do that. <laughs> we used to give that to him all the time. So a lot of those papers that we have, you know, we kept it, and those are wow. part of our curriculum that I use. Oh my, yeah, yeah, for sure. Or art, yeah. I mean, like, <laughs> collect collectible. And then you know, <clears throat> having with him that long this is where my and when i don't see him i get enough materials that that's all i'm going to work on mm -hmm. and that's because i have this thing that when you only know this much and you keep doing it over and over after ten thousand repetition you're going to start seeing different things now you yes. start creating exactly you start yeah. with that thing mm -hmm. then once you start creating then you're going to start mm -hmm. Thinking, you're gonna start innovating mm. so that's basically what i what i did with the iCali program gotcha. my um, iCali is basically it's a piquiti but in a different way and the gotcha. way yeah. mm. just as far as what you teach your students because i mean again you know i, I mean i i've done quite a bit of peak taking training but i don't claim i don't claim any rank or anything like that it was just more a curiosity and and all that but regards to you um when i look at um, from the various guests i've had on uh, through the ptk lens and just like of a better way to put it kind of like old school versus new the new methodology so did you is your um did you get more of the 64 ways attack the 12 methods and the tri v if so when you teach do you blend all of them together or do you kind of stay in one lane far as the time frames when you got it. Okay, so basically, the way I've learned the sixty-four, learned that those those methods, but I didn't go into it in like a, as detail as I would like to, and that's because majority of the things that I wanted was the app, uh, the application. I was more into the application when I, okay. when and plus I was more into the blade. When uh, he knew that I was more into the blade, he goes, "Well, you need to. This is where." It, what you're looking for is this mm -hmm. it's on the tri v what they call the tri v formula which mm -hmm. is basically at that time called a tri v formula and the tri v formula is learning how to create the formula and what he did to create the dose and methods what he did to create the 64 attacks so if oh, you right. those things come out on what you're doing then as opposed to memorizing it yeah like one through 30 one through whatever instead you make them come out based on how you move and yeah, a good idea and what i did to mm -hmm. the next what i did that that helped me so much is that every time i learn a drill i always ask what what is the concept behind it i mm -hmm. so now that became my personality the yeah. way i my teaching methodology that <laughs> i don't want to just teach the drill i want to teach the drill yeah. concept yeah so when you it's have a concept then you can make it yours yeah exactly yeah. because we all That's have a different build. Mm -hmm. we all have different built we have different background mm -hmm. so and and that's kind of like how i work with the students so that way i don't want them to move like me sure because mm -hmm. sure. we're yeah. different built but yes. i want them to get the proper mechanics of the yes. move because you can only move a stick and the blade in so many ways right mm -hmm. yeah i mean because of based on your body <laughs> Yeah, mm -hmm. I know 100%. I mean, yeah. right. And so, 
most of my exposure was in the tri V and the way it was explained to me was kind of like in a, uh, well, several, it was explained to me in several kind of ways. One, a bridge system to get the military ready mm -hmm. and all that. And two, you had the fort, you had the, you know, shoulder loads, you know, the bomb loads and, right, right. and, and all that. Um, yeah. It's um, all of that. They're all as opposed to like in the tri V they teach you the loading positions, right? The load, yeah. And before they just tell you chamber. Chamber, okay. Oh, so one from oh, one from chamber to loads, gotcha. Yeah. Okay. So if okay. they go, okay. if you hit an angle one, you bring it back and make sure you chamber. You yeah. Chamber. No, they always told me like so hit right. and then put it on the shoulder load. Put gotcha. it, you know, hit down and put it on the download instead. That's what that's what was told to me. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's so cool. it is. I mean, they're all the same. You can only move the stick in so yeah. many ways. Yeah. Yeah. It's just and okay. I so. think I think it's um how we what's gonna make the art flourish or what's going to take the art to the next level which is look grant the have taken Pikiti to a whole new level imagine his grandfather passed away when he was 18. Mm -hmm. right just imagine what he did when he was 18 all the way to 84. No, 100 of how he took that and he took that because he understood the concept he understood the the fundamentals mm -hmm. and then he yeah. went to being an expert and this is how we preach all the time it's the fundamental the expertise and then the mastery yeah and you get those from the repetition um and yeah, there's no just, to it, really and, and what i meant by that is like also what i relate to that is the fundamentals right which is the same thing as just knowing mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. an expert with it understanding try to understand both sides yeah and the mastery is you know basically from yeah. applying yeah. You gotta yeah. Apply. So yeah. You gotta yeah 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 so, tom before i show the vid folks we're going to be showing you vid um because the next thing we're going to go over is the whole concept of counter offense and the vid that we're going to show kind of illustrates that before i do tom did you have any any questions anything you wanted to yeah no i just absolutely want to add it's really interesting for like even for me uh because i don't practice bikini I do have a friend in the UK who practices and teaches Piketty, Jim Panelio. But oh, yes. yeah, it's basically yes. getting to understand uh, the differences of how how Piketty was taught to different instructors. It's really interesting because by the looks of it and by how you do it, you approach it in a more of like a coach rather than just a mere teacher. Yes. Because you, under you understand your student, you understand how to approach them. And you manage to basically yep, capitalize on their strengths and their weaknesses, mm -hmm. and to allow the allow the art to flourish in yes. um, in different uh, to dif different individuals. So, which is really good. Yeah, um, we do have a similar thing happening in 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 in, in lightning. Yes. Basically, from from my initial instructor, uh, the late uh, Elmer Ibanez, he managed to make to make a a curriculum from mm -hmm. what he learned from Mang Ben. Now this time, John is actually bringing it to another level by do, by teaching it in a clustered way. So basically making sure that everybody gets the concept, not mm -hmm. just memorizing the drill and the application as well. So from that perspective, yeah, I, I do really appreciate what uh, what uh, PTK has been going through when it comes to how the syllabus or the curriculum has been taught to diff by, by the different tattoo ones and how they were learned by the different tattoo ones. And, and, mm. Yeah, and, and basically, um, I think all the Tuhon and Pekiti have their own different, uh, the way they understood it. It's their own interpretation of, yeah. of what they were taught and that mm. they explain. Not that one is better than the other. You know, no, no martial art is better than the other. It's based on individual, right? yeah it is and the thing is i think the the one thing that that's why most people say well what you're doing is not pikiti and that's because the difference what i did is uh i learned the drills and i see how grand tuhan moved back then mm -hmm. and i see all the other grandmaster and the way they move mm -hmm. it wasn't they weren't stationary they were moving their body they were yeah. on physical based mm -hmm. on uh body mechanics right yes when yeah. you like when you throw the baseball you know you turn back you yeah walk, and then take a big step yeah There's no difference when you would hit an angle one if you really you know when you're doing full contact it's fine you would hit the same exact way if you mm. want to hit as hard as you can it, yeah so yeah 
yeah, so it's all based on body mechanics. So because I was doing uh, the personal training, based yes, on the body you mechanics, understand the body. Yeah, yeah, you understand so the that, And then what I did is that I created the program based on uh, the way I understood the art from him, mm. and I and also watch and remember the way he was teaching me, the way he was moving, that is really important, how, yes. he, how he moved. Mm. And I reverse engineered everything. And I yeah. Yeah. instead of doing the traditional drills, I create mm. new drills that will make people do the movement, the attributes yeah. that they need to do. Yeah. That's why yeah. some of the drills that I do might be, and you'll get to see it. Um, I'll have my son do it with the kids because some of the drills that we do in Pikiti, if you show it to the kids in the blade form, mm -hmm. none of the parents will stay. So I'll do it through the sticks. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's nice. the same exact movement. And as they get older, yeah. if I say, by the way, it works the same with the kid, but they figure it out sooner or later anyway. <laughs> here, here, yeah, it's it works just, the same as blade. You're just evolving. Exactly. Look, um, Grant Tohon did the same. He evolved, but he learned. I'm trying to do the same thing. I'm yeah, trying to it. Right, and yeah. so far right now, what um I mean a lot of the people that have trained with me, I do um PKT, but I just do different drills that makes people move the way like the you no know, the way that's gonna be comfortable for them. So I can mm. build that foundation, then that I can build so anything, then I can decorate it any way I want. Mm. All right. Okay. So, yeah. That's a brilliant idea, actually. Yeah, well, because I was taught, he always told me that, like, oh, by the way, um, I Kali does not mean it's me that's Kali. No, it's Kali stands for indigenous Kali. Yeah. Okay, okay. We were... Here's why. Well, I want right, to so preserve, I want so to preserve it's the way. Not... You've seen how Grant Tohon moved, yes, yeah. even in his early days. Yeah. You know? Um, Wow, it's like it, not just Grand Tohongahe, but all the other um, grandmasters, the way they mm. move. I mean, they really move true to their body mechanics. Yes, exactly. If they, yes. If they chamber, yeah. they chamber. It's not like they just chamber like this. You know, you see mm. them moving and turning. Mm. And those are some of the indigenous movement that I thought should be kept and because Absolutely. they have body yeah. mechanics. So 100%, yes. that would allow people to do that. That would allow the students that trained me to be able to express themselves. After all, it's about exp everybody, common denominator, everyone say, it's about expressing yourself, expressing right? Yourself. Yeah. I want them to be able to do that, but create a platform where people can express themselves through the, uh, that's why I call it the iKali program, which is the indigenous Kali. Indigenous Kali. Kali. Do the tradition, but the new method of teaching. Yeah, yeah, which is yeah. the contemporary, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna show this. So, Juan, yeah. I'm gonna show this vid, and then you can just kind of take us sure. through a brief explanation of uh, your of counteroffensive, and then we'll get your we'll get to the demo. Yes, sir. All right, here we go, folks. So, uh, folks, this is a um, it's kind of self-explanatory uh, broken strike, but he's gonna but you're gonna see him discuss um, about the uh, counteroffensive. Mm -hmm. The broken, the broken strike, strike the one, one of the main reasons why we always, always touch a bicep. bicep. Number, Number one, it teaches you the proper, proper positioning of your empty hand. Instead, Instead of, of the person's, the person's hands in, in and then they're doing striking, striking and they don't, they don't know what to do with the hand. That's the, That's the biggest thing, thing that, I've that I've seen all throughout my training in the art of Kali is this hand, the empty hand. So let me show you when we do the broken strike. The reason, the reason why, why the hand, hand comes to your, your, to your to bicep, bicep so is so that see, I'm parrying as I'm hitting. As I'm, as I'm, as I'm, I'm parrying as, as I'm hitting for, I can, I cut, can to cut to the body. body. So, so the movement, the movement of, this, of this is basic. The touching, the touching of the bicep, bicep you're already, already learning how to pair. It's called mm. counter, counter offense. So the key so is, is we cannot be defensive. We have to be. Offensive. offensive and back. So if, so I, if I need hit, to hit and back, now, now I can, can continue. continue. Yeah. So, when so when they're, they're doing back and forth like this, so, 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 so
See, see, I can, I can hit again. So, so that's, that's one of the reasons why you cut your bicep every time, every time you strike, strike on what, on what most people, people, people on what we refer, refer to as number one. one. But it's a, but it's a broken, broken strike. strike. It's a fake strike. So it's a so fake strike. strike. So what happens, so what happens is, this? is this? A broken, a broken strike, strike is this. A fluid, a fluid strike, strike, strike is when it's going all the way to the So, so most, most people all the way to the Get all the way through, and back get all the way through. What's the concept of broken strike? Get all the way through. You can take him out with the dog. That leaves an opening. Because when I'm about, I'm about to hit him in the face, his first, his first reaction, reaction is to hit block and look at that. That leaves you wide open. That's why we have what we call broken strike. Wow, I haven't seen that. Nice breakdown. Time. <laughs> All right, so let's. So just for fun, I thought it'd be neat that you could go over kind of the um, whole the whole concept yeah, so, as far as uh, what they were talking about. Okay. Were talking about? So broken. I mean, uh, my whole concept behind that, if you go through in that the entire detail of that video, is to have this empty hand, a live hand moving. Yeah. You know, mm. a lot of times we, you know, um, I was taught from the very beginning that in Piketty or in the Filipino martial arts, but mainly the way Grant Tohon Leo guy taught me in the beginning is that you're always double weapon. It's the double weapon. I'm striking with the blade yeah. or stick, but my other hand is doing something else. Yeah. That mm -hmm. was one of the things that I love. So if I'm on the long range, what it does, it keeps your hand in the middle when you strike in the mm -hmm. long range. So that way it's not hanging out. Because yeah. hitting one time hit, and I forgot my hand was there. Mm. You hit their own hand. How many of us have hit our hand? <laughs> so I'm like, exactly. I have to know what they call the third hand principle. Like mm. being able to place the proper to placement. Place, yeah. yeah. And just to give you guys um, an idea on why I do that. Um, well, reason why when I, I don't go this way. When I teach people where to place this hand, see? And then when they strike here, it goes to the hip and then it points. Mm -hmm. So later on, we have this section, uh, which is I consider a little bit more advanced than the basic, right? Um, the spada y daga, right? Which is the okay. stick and dagger. So yeah. when I grab it, they're already learning it from the beginning. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. As opposed to wait until you learn stick and dagger and then you got to know where the placement of this uh, I got placement you. of that you already have that yeah and exactly. if you start off without and it's over here this is one of the reason why it goes there so now you have it mm. so that was my whole purpose behind that it's uh, mm. a way to set up to create a progression yes. on the yeah. curriculum so it will take them to the next level so that when i teach the uh stick and dagger i don't mm. need to restart a whole new thing yeah, yeah. Right back all the way up when you don't have exactly. to right, exactly right. So, so that was the purpose of this now also when you close in if you one of the things that i love about and you mentioned about piquiti what resonated a lot is the the close quarter the close quarter and the movement of the blade, the, blade yeah. mm -hmm. the movement of the blade is what i fell in love with because nobody the way i was taught is this this right and back it's really it's this this and you know it, it's gonna move mm -hmm. and way whether the others i'm sure and i, I and i know positive that sure the other grandmaster knew that and, mm -hmm. and they knew that but the time that i was hosting them they can't it's it's hard they didn't teach it because like i said they teach whatever comes to their mind comes to their mind yes. same time they know that oh man i can't teach this uh this part because the people never even touch the sticks before right right and some of our format they're not going to like give they're not going to give the concept right mm -hmm. what they like is something that will complement with their hands so yeah the yes, existing exactly part. that's why and stick is yes yeah, yeah. yeah. and that's I mean, look at remy presses you know so like what he did you know as far as the teaching methodology do i use this you know I do whatever it takes to make the student understand what they're doing. Then that's really important when you teach. Yes. Yeah. Mm. So if they can't, I can know all three, all, all the different subsystems. 
But if I can't teach a person and make them understand what's important, why it's important for them to strike on a diagonal angle and hit that bicep, if I can't make them do that, then, you know, then I need to work on my teaching. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's why I always say I'm always a student. Yeah. yeah. Man. Learning yes. things. If I'm not learning new technique, I'm learning how to do the new, how to, new, how to do the old technique. Yeah. Sorry. Hey, how are you? That's, All right. Okay. We're ready for demo, Tuan, if you're ready. Yeah. Demo? Yeah. Sure. Then, we'll, then we'll, after your demo, we're going to jump into your whole um, iCali. iCali. Okay. 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 Apollo? My son's name, by the way, is Apollo. Apollo, As well. Apollo <laughs> Jr. Apollo 1. Hey! <laughs> I, and I tell you. How old is he? Huh? How old is he? He is nine years old. Apollo is nine years old. I'm putting him through actually the program that, and you get to see some of the drills that I do different from mm -hmm. the uh, traditional, but I want something that is simple, that easy to digest. Mm -hmm. and, I, and later on, I can make it as complicated as I want. Yeah. I can, de I can yeah. decorate it any way I want. Yeah. Right? It's when actually really important that you manage to get to the foundation and then layer it as they progress. Mm. The, OK, I'm going to do the demo, and then I'll explain. All right, I'm gonna, we're gonna, I'm going to lower ourselves. All right. So basically, okay, the, the way we do um, the movement, everything that we do is all based on my program for the kids. This is what he's, um, what he's learning is basically what we call the learn to teach, teach to learn. So after he learns it from me, he will turn around and teach the other kids how to do it. So that means I have to teach him how to teach it also, okay? So let me give you an example. I want you to give me the first three and teach it to me, the Ready? first free flow of um, open series. Entry four, temple, hip, knee, back to your shoulder, switch leg. Okay, good. Temple, hip, knee, back to your shoulder, switch, feet together, say entry six. Entry six. Put your right leg forward. Mm -hmm. Temple, hip, knee, Back to your oh, next to the other stick. Uh-huh, next to the other stick. Okay, good. Other side, right? Temple, hit, knee, next to the other stick. Temple, top. Say next. top. Top. Temple, top, knee. Back to shoulders with right. Temple, top, knee. Why do we tap? Why do we tap? What's the purpose of tapping? Um, what are you hitting? The toe. Oh, the toe. So that way, if I hit, if you hit my toe and I move, what's there for you to hit? The knee. Okay. Oh, are you sure the knee? Or? Or the. Yes. Foot. Okay. So don't forget that. Okay. So tap, temple, tap. So if I hit your toe, what would you do? Now you forgot about your upper body. So a person can only think of one thing at a time. So we teach the whole series step by step, and he has to learn that turn around and teach it to the other kids. So this way, I'm not gonna wait until he is 30 years old before I start teaching him how to teach. He's teaching right from the get-go. All right, ready? Now I want you to do the close series to open, uh, close series, umbrella series, and open. Okay? Pass. Yes, ready, go. Ready? Then give me that single stick. Single, single. Single, single. Yes, ready? And um, high load. Broken, fluid, reverse. Broken, fluid, reverse. You gotta move. Shoulder load. Broken, Go. it, fluid, it's wrong. reverse. Move. Broken, fluid, reverse. Ready? Next move. What? What's that? Mid load. Go. Mid load. Broken, 
Good. Tell me where the other hand's supposed to be. Mid load. Bait. Okay, hands the bait. Go. Broken. Good. Reverse. Download. Distraction. Distraction. Go. Good. Reverse. And go. Distraction. Broken. Good. Reverse. Okay, I'm back. All right, next. Give me positioning of this hand when we hit angle one and angle two. Okay? Two, three. Go. Stop. Go. Go. Enter. Enter again. Enter one more time. Okay. Good. Good job. Good job. Good job. Good job. Good <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, also, oh wait, wait, come here. I want to show the empty hand. Can you show the empty hand? Okay, uh, second level first. Go. No, second level. Go. Fingers in the eye. Shield control. No, that's it. Then strike. Good. Go. Go. Go strong. And now, and go. Say it. Say it. Bicep. Detail. I'm on detail. Go. Don't look at me. Thumbs down. Grab the wrist. Arm break. Good. Stomach. Over under. Grab your own wrist. Figure four. Then. Center wally. Good. Crank it up. Good. Grab the bicep. Mm -hmm. Don't look at me. Good. Thumbs down. Grab the wrist. Arm break. Good. Okay. And. Over under. Grab your own wrist. Figure four. Okay. Do it again. Do, do it uh, wrist lock. Over here, wrist lock. Go. Good. Don't move. Don't move. Why do you push the face? So they don't headbutt you. So they don't headbutt you. Because when it's down like this, look at that. Right? And then? Okay, good. Now, can I headbutt you? No. Okay, then what do you do after that? You grab the how wrist. How do I grab the how you grab the wrist? You gotta teach you gotta teach them. They don't know it. Push so the face. You have to push the face. Then tell them the position then, of your hand. Make like a what letter. Make a C, mm -hmm. but put it upside down. Or thumbs down, and then? And then arm break, Good. which put their bicep mm -hmm. parallel to your chest. Good. And then? Stomach over, over. under. Grab then, your wrist. Figure four. What if they reverse it and then give you the toe? I don't know. You kiss papa. <laughs> That's what that means. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> So, basically, that's some of the basic things that we do for the kids. Wow, that was awesome. Good right to him. All right, I know. Hey, I want to pop it for you. What's your choice? Yeah, I don't know. What do you say? They say you're Thank you. Well done. Well done. Well done. Thank you. Yeah. See, I am not waiting. Nine. I am not waiting until he's thirty before he start teaching. Exactly. I like the way I like the way you uh, combine uh, the physical practice and the cognitive practice as well. Yes, it helps them remember. Thank you. That was the yeah. whole purpose of that. By the way, that is that is brilliant. That is one of the reason why uh, we have a um, physical therapist that has six locations, mm. several locations that are using our program. Mm. Uh, because oh, of, because of the oh that's fantastic. So I, is, it's really for the parents, ed, educated parents, when they see you're doing this with the class, the, and even school teachers, you have professionals that will be in the back of the school. You never know who's in the back of your school. Mm. You know, they're watching, and they go, mm. you know, your program. Look, I got to, I ended up teaching at Google at one time. I end up uh, having this program at Google because, you know, I was watching my video on the plane and the Google planner happened to be, you know, next to us. And then also we have, mm -hmm. I have one of my, um, one of my representative in San Diego, um, little Greg Ceriso, um his sister works over there and we end up doing over there for a team building program. Mm -hmm. I mean, think about it. You can use this for a team building program. We have people that doesn't communicate to each other, like engineers. 
they're so focused on this or kids they're always focused on the ipad right yeah imagine if they're teaching each other now the shy person becomes you know the kids have no confidence now all of a sudden yeah. they're speaking because it's the culture in the school to talk yeah the person while you're teaching them right mm. to them mm -hmm. know, temple hip knee mm. all of these it's, are a good, all it's a good way to start building their confidence and also building up uh, attributes for leadership as well so you said it leadership yeah. that is what we call the leadership yeah. mm. they're learning how to teach well that's done. why my whole program is about learn to teach yes teach to learn exactly right you yeah. guys are kids yes mm. I used to teach in the Montessori. And we did the same thing. That's it. We did the so, same thing. You have kids, right? Mm -hmm. We learn so much about kids after having them. <laughs> yes, of course. Yeah, after and having them. The yeah. FMA instructors, you would learn so much more when you're teaching the art because if you don't know the answer, you would search. Yeah. Not right, teaching, yeah. you would just be stuck there. You would train. Right, yeah. But otherwise, you know, because you don't have anybody that's always questioning, giving you mm -hmm. questions. Why do we do this? Mm -hmm. um, I don't yeah. know that's the way my instructor did it, but I'm going <laughs> to research, right? So it makes you research. Mm. Okay. Yeah, it's a brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Speaking brilliant. of that, let's jump into your program, your system, Icon Lee. When did you create it? What was the inspiration in your initial goal? All right. So you know going through a lot of the seminars i always um one of the things that i said i i have to experience for myself was you know if i'm gonna be preaching the filipino martial art of course you have to you have to fight you have to spar it's a combative art you know you gotta, mm -hmm. test it. You gotta do all the you gotta know it understand it know the concept then apply it right and then you know as we were doing all of that I see that one of the biggest thing that that's going to happen with the FMA based on what I'm seeing after being in the martial art industry for so long is the the teaching of it because it will go from the grandmaster to somebody that just came just learned from the seminars and then it's going to get watered down right away mm -hmm. so okay. it's like we need a platform we need to create some sort of a a curriculum, a platform, I, and there's a lot of people that are already doing that. Before mm. I, you know, yeah, 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 a lot of the ones that are already doing that. Um, then I said oh, that one of the things that I love about going to seminars is like I had a great experience. But imagine if I have a great experience and be able to maintain the things that I learn in the seminar. Mm. That was I said that would be my first goal. Second is that I need to make people to create something that that people can digest, that people okay. can give them too much information. It's yeah. overwhelming, you know, mm -hmm. just, you know, start giving them pieces, piece by piece. And then I, I started to see that, man, people from all over the U.S. will come for the weekend just to get to get it that way, uh, as opposed to getting a lot of things all at yeah. once. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's what we did. So before the, so I started this for, I moved here. I moved out of, of Maryland. When I had my school, I moved to Florida. And that's okay. when I created the program already, but I wanted to focus on it. So to do, you know, if you want to do something, you got to focus on it to get the best results. Got so right. I stopped my, my, I left my martial arts school here in Maryland. My brother ran it. Some of my old students ran it. Then, I moved to Florida and started a whole new thing over there. And I started working with the kids first. Mm. And the FMA needs to be, nobody was teaching kids back then. Not that many, mm. not that I know of. Okay. Yeah. What year? What year? Uh, this would be about 15, I would say 15 years ago or long, almost going on almost 20 years ago. Almost oh, two years. Okay. I was doing it. See? <laughs> no, my program though nowhere's as popular or yeah. good or as thorough as yours. But it, I was, yeah. yeah, we didn't but know. And, and every seminars that you go to, no kids allowed. It's all adults, right? Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Eight, right? they have to be 16 yeah. or yeah. And above. So I'm like, I have this, I have this thing. I learned so much from teaching kids. kids. Myself, so I know how to get to them. So I, I started creating the iKali program, which is the indigenous Kali. I wanted to use to teach the old traditional way. Got it. The culture. Yeah. At the same time, be able to have the bottom line is the result. Are they moving? Yeah. Moving like the way they should that my instructor would approve. Mm. Right. Yeah. So that was the thing. It doesn't matter how you, you know, the journey could be like our martial art journey can be going this way here. Our, our goal, we all have the same goal to get, mm. to, to get there, right? So, and that's how I started with the iKali program is because of, uh, I started working with the kids because I saw that the future of this art mm -hmm. is with yeah. the kids. Yeah. Exactly. Um, I totally 100% agree with you. Absolutely. Yes. And a lot of people used to say, oh, you're going to water down the art if you teach it to the kids. Uh, oh, my God. The art is well, going to water this? down if we, we don't let them water down if we don't get them involved. If we don't get them involved because they're much more creative than we are, you know, just like what GT said, I mean, you're much more creative than I was when I was at your age. Mm -hmm. I know, like, my son is, I have to ask him questions on how to use the, you know, the iPad. And yeah, I know, it's like, it comes in like that, you know what I mean? Yeah, so they pick things up, and plus the new way, if we don't evolve, yeah. it's not going to get anywhere. Yeah, that's true. Hundred percent agree with that. If we don't get them involved. We don't have to worry about anything being watered down. There won't be anything there. <laughs> look at yeah. the, look how the all the martial arts. Every every single art have evolved. FMA doesn't evolve. It's not going to get the recognition it's needed right now. It's been going. It's been on the films. It's been on you know mm. everywhere. You see a lot of uh, celebrities doing more and more. Kali choreographers yeah. are doing Kali yeah. because it's the new thing. It, it it gives that new look, and and a lot of the choreographers that I I have the opportunity to train with, what they love is there's something sexy about Kali, right? Mm -hmm. The way it's movement, and it's not just the session; it's the the practicality. Yeah, if it's yeah. done right. If it's done right, the practicality of it. That's well. mm -hmm. yeah. You know, I mm -hmm. really, and I really based on what I've learned in teaching kids, really created this formula of being able to make them retain the information that we're giving by mm -hmm. repetition and, and disguising repetition. Which mm. we do. We disguise the repetition, like the broken strike, you see the mechanic of the broken strike, mm -hmm. no different than parry salute. Yeah. Right? The, That's or, true. Yeah. Yeah. So the same thing. I, I, yeah, and then when I, or it could be what most people refer to as gunting, right? Mm -hmm. Scissor, mm -hmm. Right? It's the yeah. scissor and chamber same. back. Or thing with a broken strike and coming back. It's no different. Mm -hmm. So why would you teach gunting this way? Why would you teach the broke? I mean, the broken strike this way, where your hand stays on the chest? And yeah. You when you can incorporate it, one where your hand doesn't move. It's Basically, I what I did uh, with the program is trying to make the the technique easier to understand. Understand by making it what I call the letter D. Yeah, it applies to all of the above. Mm, mm, mm. Right, which means yeah. if you strike with the stick this way, I strike with the blade that way. I hammer fist the same exact way. Exactly. Right? Yeah. And then mm. I put a pen, it will be the same exact way. Same yeah. right, right. Then yeah. if you get the one ten thousand repetition, I got yeah. every single things that I do that I touch, mm. and I strike on the angle one, mm. it's ten thousand mm. rep that's already done. Yeah. Mm. Actually, you can use it the same as the entry entry to O when yes. you get your body set the same yeah. thing. Yeah, this is one of the reasons why I prefer a straight edge blade blade. Because mm. a straight edge blade it doesn't get rid of, I mean, I jabbed so many years. I don't yeah, want to get rid of that. Trust, yeah. I don't want to get rid of that. Yeah, right, how are you going to turn that off, right? Now? Yeah, I can't turn that <laughs> off. It's a habit already. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm not supposed to jab like that with this. That's mm. why I prefer straight edge, because it allows me to move straight jab. Yeah, straight jabs. Oh, yeah, yeah. All mm. my mechanics that I use 
it's already there. My camera yeah. fits the same, my hook the same. Mm -hmm. I don't change anything. So I I can complement it as opposed to replace as opposed to hurling doing a whole new thing. So that's yes. basically what the iCali program is. The iCali so how did you when did you start to see the success? Because obviously you're not just in Florida. I mean, you're, if I'm not mistaken, you're in other countries and continents. How, yes, how did you get it to flourish and get into other con countries and continents? Was it through the vehicle? Was it through the lens of the Taekwondo schools you were affiliated with or just it gained in popularity? Um, I think it's, it's both. So oh, okay. Okay. when I have some FMA practitioners that's been doing it, Excuse me for one second. Follow him. Sure. All right. And Joe, I got two. I got your past question too, Joe. On yeah. the TV. Yeah. 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 So basically, when I was with, because of I was my foot is already at the door in the martial art industry. Mm. I was like, wow, it would be so neat if I flip flop it and you and bring the FMA. Sure, and sure. Do whatever I can to help the FMA. Right, right, right. Um, yeah, and exactly. then, you know, the people that knew me in the industry, they said, "No, Apollo would do. If he does something, he's gonna do it. He's gonna do it with a reason, mm -hmm. a reasoning behind it." And so I, you know, a lot of the martial arts schools, whether it's Taekwondo or any uh, martial arts schools, there, you know, there's a big retention problem with the kids. Mm -hmm. And kids, the way they they will stick with it. Name one kid who does not want to do weapon. <laughs> uh, to me, I tell you, when I had it, it was the most popular module. My school, like I had grappling, I yes, had, I had punching, kicking, grappling. The stick from yeah. the stick stuff, most popular. But you know mm -hmm. what? The difference is that when you do the sticks, and the parents can see that it's there's a progression. Yeah, right. Yeah. Not just is, it, uh, there is the purpose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. That they can, they're actually learning self-defense. Yes. I, I can tell you right now, um, our school in New Jersey is predominantly families. All right. That's good. Is yeah. this under eight? Will start and the kids will start and the parents go, I can learn that. Wow. Mm. The concept because you guys are teaching the concept and it's something that I can do with my kids. So now mm. majority of our students in, um, in our New Jersey location, this is where um, Master Ace Ramirez. And yeah, I, okay, right. That's what I thought. Okay. And it's predominantly all parents. Here, I got uh, the kids, and the parent, the kids come in at five, six o'clock. The parents get in. That's awesome. Okay. Where in New Jersey is he? Uh, Norwood, New Jersey. He's in Newark. Okay. Yeah, Norwood, and also in Bergensfield. We're in the process of opening up in Bergensfield. So Norwood. Wow. And, uh, okay. Yeah. Is that Upper New Jersey or? Norwood, it's right outside of Manhattan. It's 15 minutes away from New York. Oh, so it's just across the bridge then? Across the bridge, yes, exactly. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Okay. So this is, I, I feel that what is missing, and not just in the Filipino martial arts, but also in the martial art industry, um, is um, something that will keep the kids involved, uh, continue. The retention. Mm, yeah. I promoted it as a retention program mm. to keep the kids in the martial art. Because uh, but at the same time, if I keep keep if I keep preaching the the art to those same people that hey I, I put your program at my school, they love it. I gotta learn more. So yeah. they, they started continue they continue their training. When they adapt, so when they adapted your, your yeah, program, they end up going Wow, it really, the way you're teaching it is this guy is a Wing Chun guy. And he goes, the way you're teaching it, it really complements Wing Chun. Yeah. I, I think it's a Taekwondo guy. The way you're teaching it, it complements my Taekwondo because of your mm -hmm. background. Um, I teach it with a, a group that do nothing but just Krav Maga. And they go, hey, the way you teach, the, the way you're teaching it, it really, um, it complements Krav Maga. And the reason for that is because, mm -hmm. I do not just do FMA. I learn the Krav Maga curriculum, so I can learn, so I can see. Yes, you can, you can oh, relate to yeah. them. We can incorporate. Yeah. I learn all the other art, and I, I mean, I'm not saying I'm black, but I learn their fundamentals, the basics, so that I can relate to people. Yeah, I think it's really, it's really important that you do that, especially when you, hmm. uh, when you cross teach, uh, teach it across uh, a general board of uh, practitioners. Mm -hmm. 
because you don't you don't appear to become exclusive yes. as well. And you know what and, I learned. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And also they see that you you take your time to learn it from their perspective. And yeah. Yeah. And you know one of the most um big learning experience that, that I got by doing that, especially now that I'm in the martial art industry and I get to meet all these people, the top, some of the top of, of each different art. So I'm very blessed that I can get to train with them, work out with them. One of the things that um, big lesson that I learned from them is like, as I'm learning from them, it's like the more I know, the more I feel like I don't know. Mm. Uh, I used to hear that. that parallels your forever student. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And I know how to, and the, one of the biggest thing is, and for me, is that the em empathy. You gotta, you have to be able to. You have to, you have to. You have to know mm. what it's like to be a student, mm. to be mm. an instructor, mm. and to mm. be a father, and to be a teacher, to be yeah. a teacher of the teacher. Yeah. In for you to be, and, and if you've never taught kids before. Yeah. It, it, I tell you, I, you, you can't, I can't say all the top instructors in the world have never mm. taught kids yeah it's a special takes a special it's, it's different special, yeah it is you have yeah. to you, you have to embrace it you have to it you have to exactly, exactly. Yeah. yeah that's true it's not for everybody no so that's basically that's why i said you know with our um program with the way i created the program for the kids i need to develop more instructors to be able to teach and communicate this material yeah but it, regardless of their background mm. because mm. the background that they have it's going to be their own flavor and how they're going to teach it yeah they're doing yeah. kids they can get the other stuff but imagine oh. where the art can go where the fma will mm. go if we maintain those things yeah that's true, oh, yeah. That's true. I, I, I completely I, agree with that yeah so yeah. Is that your business model too on i'm sorry sir is that your business model getting others to kind of teach it and then carry out spread it is that kind of the yes, idea I really focus more on the instructors on because it has to start with us uh yeah so okay. i share the knowledge that i have in teaching because i know whenever even if the instructor is have never taught martial art before mm. i learn how they teach some some of them yeah. just have the knowledge it's, you know they it's, have yeah it's really teaching, important and yeah. i still learn from them Mm. If I don't learn new things, I learn how new instructors would think. Yeah. It, mm. it helps me mm. to create a formula on how to teach instructors based mm. on what I'm learning from them. Uh, okay. On 15 things, mm. then let's give them 10. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So that mm. way you get overwhelmed with it. So it's trial and error, you know? I, um, of course. Of we course. Get a lot of trial and error until, you know, based on my experience and plus my staff. You know their experience mm. also on, uh, um, of creating curriculums, their experience in uh, teaching a different martial arts. So I learned from I learned yeah. from. Them. Yeah. So give a seminar. I never have plans on what I'm going to do. <laughs> no, so structure thing. Just wing it. <laughs> no, because you have to see who the audience is. Some of these people. Yes, are, exactly. Exactly. I did a seminar in. I did a seminar in. Um, I, yeah. I did a seminar in North Carolina. It's like 531 people, kids and adults, mm -hmm. um, every year. <clears throat> you know, incredible. every time they already, as soon as I left, before I left, can we book you for next August already? Mm. Every year, because they have such a great time. Mm. Uh, if you make sure they had a great experience and they learn something. Of course. Right? Yeah, exactly. Mm. I have this thing that. I have to educate people when I'm doing a seminar or what I'm teaching um, and also entertain them, which means make sure they have fun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nobody likes to do things that it's not. Of fun course, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Dean, whether you like it or not, I know you have fun doing this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you have to, otherwise you will not continue. No, 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 you know it comes with some unpleasant side yeah, dishes. There's some consequences, but you know what? The main course is usually and this is what good. Yeah. this is the phrase that I use to all my group. It's called ikalimo. Yeah. Ikalimo. And you say ikalimo. You do whatever it takes to mm. get the 
the goals that get you it. have set for yourself. Yeah. Right? Get it done. My goal was to, you know, to get it into the martial art industry. Mm. One of my dream at uh, the first time I, I um, in the very beginning, uh, one day I'll get featured on the magazine. 2018, it happened, and it happened to be a black belt magazine. Oh, and guess what? I ended up being featured with it with my instructor, Granta Hongahe. Oh yeah. Jeez. Oh, yeah. So they wanted to feature me in the magazine. Mm -hmm. I said, I don't think so. I think you should give the credit where it's due. These guys mm -hmm. have done it with guerrilla marketing, with going from, right. you know, announcing, inviting one person at a time, oh, come to my center. Right, and black and white. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. They, yeah. Do, they sacrifice so much just to, right. so we can have a platform where we are now. Yeah. Of course, you got that right. I'm going to give them credit for it. Yeah, no one of course, exactly. yeah, of course. And that's part of the reason why before I think any of us get recognized and the growth of FMA, I think some of the grandmasters that there before us and the people that I am connected to is Granto, I mean, Granto and uh, Guru Dan. So that's why we had, uh, if we can make that happen of acknowledging them with the um, Lifetime Achievement Award and what they've done for the Filipino martial arts. Oh my gosh, before it gets yeah, big, that goes without saying. Right, that's go, that goes without saying. We don't no. need to do that, but I think if anybody gets recognized in the martial arts, those guys and the others that passed on mm. that's no longer with us yeah uh, you know with you know Tatang Ilustrissimo, mm. and Abales, all and of those people yes. that are still you know uh Anshu Bakon, all of the people that are still around, i think they should be you know we should give them i totally name. totally 100 oh. agree with you they should all right the Kennedys, i mean the whole all of them yes yeah. Everyone. I got a question here. Yes, sir. Um, and it's regarding kind of this kind of is going to fit in. And it's from Joe. It's regarding, you know, your instructors. Where do you see your future instructors as far as potential innovation and, and current status of the Kiti? You know, if the more they understand the Kiti or the more they understand and how not just the the drills but understand the concept the concepts mm -hmm. yeah. yes i i can tell you right now if i was innovative i can guarantee you just based on some of the people that i've met already that i'm teaching mm. um they're going to be more innovative than i am just imagine mm. where the art is going not mm. specifically just pikiti i i mean everywhere i go when i teach i teach in the martial art industry whenever they have the martial arts super show not okay. because just the fma it's also the met the methodology that i do also help other um instructors of different martial art yeah and the same methodology that i'm doing to okay. make people understand the technique and i think the growth of ptk the growth of fma the growth of martial art um will have to start with us instructors now if we don't do anything about it it will get watered down and I uh, agree. just because I agree. 100 i mm. have you know that's why as you notice i don't get involved on any of the politics mm. well people are here's it's the so thing. enjoyable yeah well here's the thing while everybody is doing that you know while some people are doing that i am i'm only worried about what i need to do to get to where i need to go exactly exactly you you you, you yeah, need I to, about you need to put that focus yeah. Yeah. and i think i think what's going to happen is this um i'm focused on what i have to do and we're all going to end up meeting somewhere because this fma is going to get big i mm. have no doubt and i can see from uh the where martial art is going where some of the people are coming up with all different ways different platform and how to make it big um it's just i I call that the different angle of attack. Right? Yeah. To, to get to it, like of the, way you, the way you guys are doing it with the pod, with the podcast. Mm. Other people critiquing others to get to get there. The way we're doing to get into the martial art industry. Mm. Mm. We're gonna come up with we're gonna meet in the middle somewhere where we basically gone through the whole everybody would know about it it's just a matter of time it's going to happen i think so i agree with but hollywood and as well. and i think it would be stronger it will be stronger if we all just focus on what we need to do and get along and then go from there 
I know the stupid quarreling and what have well, you and all that. God. You know what though? If it's not if it, in a way, if you look at it in a positive way, if they don't have that, um, it won't take whatever we're doing now to a whole new level. Yeah. Yeah. In a yeah. way, it's good. It's how it's, it gives. It also gives a lot of people, different people, to to look at. You know, <clears throat> they look at it this way. I like what he's doing, but let's take that to a whole new level. Mm. Like, oh, let's take that. Let's look at the things in a positive way. And, and I, then bring it to another dimension. Gotcha. Exactly. Because gotcha. everybody has positive things to offer. When everyone that I've seen. Yeah, I, I think that's fair. I agree. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody yeah. has something positive to offer. Yeah, I think that's absolutely fair. You might that's not like what they do or say, but do it's just it's just a little yeah, a little piece of the puzzle. Do, um, before I get to another question from Joe Tuhan, um, just quickly, you're great. Somebody like in other words, I want to ask this question in case somebody's watching. They might actually want to like join your sanction, actually go through mm -hmm. ranks and do you know become a teacher. What is your grading and ranking within your organization? All right. So basically the way, and I actually, before I did all of this, I, I start, I trying to study the, the way Grant Tohon was doing from back in the days, you know, in the old ways. Um, so the way I'm doing it, I'm requiring them to know. So I start off with basically a double stick, a single stick. It's module. I do it by modules. Okay. Um, so that way they learn the fundamental of each one and the concept and mm. Then I put them, you know, and they have to go into a leadership where they can teach. And instructors that wants to join us, they have to see how we present it, and they go, "Wow, other mm. connecting the dot. Oh, that's totally." Yeah. And I won't get offended with that if they tell me that. Oh, I didn't like the way you present that. I'll be like, "Thank you, sir. I'm glad uh, you told me that, and you're honest. So this way, it tells me what I need to work on. Mm. And also, it also tells me that." When the next time I get someone like you, I'm glad that you're honest. Next time I get someone like you, I will do my very best to keep by learning mm -hmm. from the mistake that I made with you. Mm -hmm. And hopefully we'll see each other again and and go from there. So I look yeah, at yeah. that in a positive way. And as far as the ranking, and so what I do is um, I follow the old ways. I don't use the same words mm -hmm. because it's hard, especially being here in the American. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Society, it, it's it's um, basically I keep it simple. You know, um, there's a beginners, there's an intermediate, and there's an advanced, right? And the beginners would be, and I based it on the um, the Philippine flag. Mm -hmm. yeah. One represent one. Usually, red is the advanced, and there's three level on each one because of the three stars. Three stars. Yeah, oh, each, I like that. Each, okay. each um okay. each one of our um main island is known for something, you know. Mm. You go to mm. where I'm from, like you know, butterfly knife. Yeah. No, right? okay, okay. But okay. Guys, so yeah, bad. you go to Mindanao, so shed, you know, that's why we have those shields. So based on the research that I've done, I just kind of like to do a parallel thing to what we're that's already there. Yeah, I think I'm, I'm nice. trying to reinvent. It's yeah. already there. yeah, and I relate it to it so that the people would understand and they get to also learn the culture mm. um, that that I am very proud of. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Have a rich yeah. heritage, and me, I grew up here. I grew up here in, in the U.S. You know, but you know my upbringing here in the U.S. I mean, growing up in the U.S., having two Filipino strict parents that they want you to do the you know. The Filipino way, yeah, it is a, it was a little tough, but at the same time, I paid benefits though. I tell you what, though, I appreciated so much more. I was gonna say, yeah. look, at, look at the success, here, right? Yeah, yeah right? exactly. And you know, a lot of things I owe, uh, and I would say, and my parents are no longer here, I owe it to them and their upbringing. Uh -huh. Yeah, um, I know I give them a hard time, but. I appreciated them so much. I'm sure more. they're smiling, looking down at you. And, and you yeah. know, what the the foundation that they gave me to be able to look at things and in the yeah. way that, um, you know, that my son, I can say my son can look up to me, you know? Yeah. Oh. I can look in the mirror and say, I yeah. yeah, yeah. No, no. <laughs> oh, trust me. I yeah. made, you know, I made my share of mistakes and regretted them and i think know. we all did 
That's part of growing. That's part of growing. Yes. But now, yes, sir. Who do you have in Connecticut? Who do you got on the East Coast? I know you got obviously Ace in New Jersey. But oh who yeah, you got, like, our East Coast is probably built more built than our West Coast group. Okay. Um, yeah. So, so you got somebody in Massachusetts? Yes, we have in Mass. We have Rhode Island. You know, I've been going to Rhode Island for thirty some years now. Who do you have in Rhode Island? You know, uh, Soke Petronelli. I do. Yeah. No of him. You know. No I've we met each other back in the days uh, in one of the Hall of Fame event that we went to, and I was doing a demonstration over there, and I mixed my demo with Taekwondo and Kali back then. Uh, and uh, we met, and then we hit it off, and I, he's been bringing me over there. Yeah, no, I definitely know him. with, um, you know, um, the Arnis uh, Jiu-Jitsu. Yeah, what about Connecticut? Uh, yeah, he was with uh, Professor V. No, no, I met, yeah, anybody in Connecticut? In Connecticut, we have, um, let's see, I have a lot, uh, quite a few people that have done, that use a little bit of program here and there, not full blown though, uh, not full blown. Um, well, if I am incorrect, I apologize, um, <laughs> you know, because uh, I usually, sometimes I forget where they're, you know, where they're at. And if I see them, I know, them. oh, that's right, you're over in, uh, you over in Massachusetts. Uh, yeah, because I'm in Connecticut. I'm trying to think who I like, who's doing. You know, huh. let's see, Connecticut, Connecticut. I I might know them. Maybe uh, we have uh, closer to that side. I know we have uh, Richard Smith. Richard, Richard Smith is also a JKD guy. Um, I have Paul Valley. Is in Rhode Island, but he's also in Rhode Island and uh, New Hampshire. Is in New Hampshire. Mm -hmm. I think. Richard yeah. Smith is Connecticut. Um, I don't know if he's in Connecticut. I've worked with, uh, in Connecticut, let's see, in Boston. I've worked with um, quite a few Kramaga over there, Paul, um, Paul's group. Mm -hmm. uh, some Kramaga, some people that are in. I got to get you somebody. I got to get you in Connecticut then. Yeah. So there yeah. we go. <laughs> we're, we're actually, Paul Sokol. I'm, yeah. We're actually be updating our website so we can put all the people that are affiliated with us just for you know what here while you're at it um let me if you don't mind just because i'm gonna mention this at the end and your website is and um, our website is art of blade dot com art of blade art of blade dot com right art of blade dot com art of blade dot com, of blade dot com. so okay. If, okay. if you want to find out more about my events my seminars it's on there that's yeah, I definitely just, I'm yeah. just saying, if you've got nobody in Connecticut, that's a shame. Um, we'll I have to figure that out. I think we do. Okay. I, okay. You know, um, mm -hmm. and I, I feel so bad. Um, it's part of getting older. No, no, some of you here, I'm sure, <laughs> some of you here, some of you here um, may mention it, but I, I'm definitely going to check out your website. We'll, well yeah. one way or another, we'll, mm -hmm. we'll have to get something going. Also, <laughs> um, I try to put as much as possible as the culture. Mm -hmm. on, some of my, on the website, on my Facebook, um, also on my Instagram, you know, I I put a, a lot of those things and also on, on our YouTube just to basically to help people familiarize themselves about the Philippine, the culture. Yeah, yeah. I think it's neat. Like on your on your YouTube channel, I saw the folk dancing, and oh, yeah. that, I thought that was that, I thought that was kind of neat. I do I do have another question here from Joe. Um, we just got the back of a bit. He wants to if you can explain how to differentiate between cold and uh, sabayan and uh, do a, so I got the sabayan, but the first one I'm gonna do abomination on. What they called the mama? Yes, that looks correct. Okay. Yeah, call them call them mom. Yeah. Ah, so call them on versus call them mom. Call them mom versus sabayan. Oh, yeah. okay. Oh, sabayan. Yeah. Call the mama and sabayan. They're basically how I understood it from Grand Tohon Dahe. It's a concept. There's a drill that's called sabayan. Um, there's a drill. Called sabayan. This is basically sabayan means at the same time. At the same time, yes. It's basically okay. what sabayan is. It's called counter offense. It's counter offense. If you mm. thrust to me, I thrust to you. Mm. I counter. I counter, and it's called counter offense. Mm. Gotcha. What's your best defense? 
a good offense. Yes. Like counter offensive. Yeah. Right. So as opposed to saying block, it's called counter offense. Counter yeah. offense. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. is um. Um, Sabayan is a nucleus basically of the kitty, uh, mm. according to Grant Hongahe. It's okay. the, the concept of being offensive, counter offensive, re counter offensive. You're basically, you know, that is the concept of the Sabayan. Reason yeah. why you have a Sabayan drill is because so you can learn how to be, um, how to be counter offensive or how you can be offensive, counter offensive, and re counter offensive. Mm. So, through the Sabayan, you use a lot of the concept that just like any drills, I, I mean, every art has a drill mm -hmm. that they're very known for, and mm -hmm. they use their concept yeah. through that. <laughs> that is basically, that. that's the Sabayan. It's the nucleus of, of the Giti because everything okay. that the Giti has to be offensive, counter-offensive, re counter offensive That's the way he explained it to me, and that's the way I understood it through that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. The the other one, which is the cold de mama, um, he used a lot of the cold de mama concept through the sabayan. Uh, there's sometimes that, you know, he would it would come across saying that the cold de mama is the same as sabayan, but the way I understood it is that the cold de mama, it's basically a saying from back in the days. It's basically a figure of speech, you know, mm -hmm. like um, it's uh, more like killing with silence. Okay. It's basically um, the way he explained to me, patayin mo, pero pinapatay mo nandi pa nila alam. Okay, yeah, all right. It's like you're already, you're already attacking them, but they don't even know it yet. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a figure of speech. Mm -hmm. But a lot of that gets used to Sabayan, to that, concept of you already think they don't even know because you're double all the time that's why the cold mama concept is done through a double blade or double weapon double even weapon. a single weapon your mentality is double while yes. you yeah. Yeah. And switch right. Right. yeah yeah right because mm -hmm. of the movement like mm -hmm. let me see yeah, i go on this side like if i move mm -hmm. that so that movement see you you saw the switch it's yeah. it's basically the switching is there Mm, okay, so I see. When okay. I go to your arm, it goes under the arm and it goes straight under your armpit without yeah, knowing. Yeah. And, it's right. like, and then yeah, okay. you, the, those techniques that go, where did that come from? I didn't even see you switch. Yeah, that yeah. stuff. Okay. That's all like almost kind of, it, it's almost like a figure of speech. Yeah. yeah. It's okay. like, um, like you said, mo, mo nandi pa lang. that's the yeah. explanation. So, by the way, I learned a lot of, um, the training in Pekiti and predominantly in Tagalog. In Tagalog. So mm. whenever uh, GT will say something in Tagalog, I'm like, man, I'm trying to explain that in English and I have a hard time. There are some things that doesn't translate. Yeah, yeah. it's hard to, oh, it's hard to yeah. express. Mm. And so whenever I, he's saying something and I can't understand, he's, he teaches it to me in Tagalog. Mm. Mm. So that's, you know, it gives a different meaning. Yeah. Um, yeah. Gotcha. So what I do is how I felt then, I want to make sure that the people that I'm teaching don't feel that way. So mm. then I teach as detail as I can. Yeah. So that they, 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 I never put them in that situation because I felt that and I felt like something is missing because it's not complete. Understood. Understood. So I always try to teach in detail. Plus, yeah. you know, the difference between the winner and the champion, right? Mm. Details. Detail. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. I thought that from you know when since I was a kid, um, one of the world champion. I was in a seminar and I heard that and it kind of stuck in my head. Mm. The winner and the champion. Well, there's no difference. They're both. You know, I was like, no, right. Detail. Yeah. Detail. Detail. The pay attention, and the the champion pay attention on details. Yes. And I was like, wow, that like a great. Uh, thing. Yeah, I know that, 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 that definitely resonates. Yeah. 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 So whenever I was being taught YGT and I can't understand, it, I would ask it in Tagalog. And then now when I teach things and I have a student that's saying, I understand what you're saying, but I, mm. I don't get it. So I learn to dissect things so that way they can. Yes, learn. makes it easier for them to understand. Yeah. I have a question from um, your man Ace in the Ace. Jersey. 
Can you inform us about the ASTIG in your program? In your program. Oh. ASTIG. Okay. Okay. ASTIG. ASTIG program. ASTIG program is basically, uh, it's your your training mentality. When you say ASTIG in Tagalog, uh, actually ASTIG is derived from the word TIGAS, right? TIGAS. TIGAS. Like, (laughs) like hard. Like, and and with us, if you use it, it's like hardcore. Hardcore. Yeah. 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 Training. Whenever you see something, oh man, that was ASTIG. That looks a stick. It means it's awesome. Mm. It's, like, mm. it's die hard. It's uh, yeah. So what I've been doing is I at first I wanted to introduce a stick with the a stick program for women self defense because mm-hmm. uh, major uh, we have a sixty percent population of when uh our of our program is women. Oh, I would have never guessed that high. That's awesome. And you know why? Wow. And I can tell you why. Please. Oh yeah. Okay. It's empowering. Yeah, I would never be as strong as the guy. But no, you know, I told you, man, women's the mm, Exactly. I and totally you know, agree, man. If you I know. think about it, majority of attack on women are mm. by multiple opponents, multiple people. Yes. I'm totally with you. It's weaponized. And, this is, mm. and they feel like this is an equalizer. Yeah. It absolutely is. A big program is not just a women's self defense class, it's also an aesthetic training. It's like you're Whole mentality when your you're mentality, creating that mentality. And it's also your lifestyle. It's your lifestyle. It's the way you do things. Oh, I like I that. train the way I perform. Oh, that's awesome that you yeah. also believe in that. Women's that is weaponized. Man. Yeah. Man, like, how is so, a uh, average woman uh, in the So no? that's one program that's been attracting a lot of the female. Um, yeah. And our 60%. Program, that's so bad. So good. Yeah. I am also working on our kids program to be, um, wor- I'm working on that to be in AAU and also Junior Olympics. Mm. Um, I did a presentation with that and they really like the way I have it organized and systemized because you have to be organized and systemized in order for them to even give you the opportunity to show it to them. Gotcha, gotcha. Uh, because of my background in the martial arts and they, as a matter of fact, some of the people that was on the, that's on the, um, uh, the board are they used to be my student when they were in college or the people mm-hmm. that they uh, mm-hmm. trained with me so but because they know me that i i like to dissect things i yeah. like to reverse engineer things they, so, yeah so they really like the way i'm putting the program together and um yeah. keep our finger crossed hopefully we can make that happen and be able yeah, to we're gonna have to um the kids i'm gonna have to get i'm gonna have to try to figure out we gotta get you a rep in Connecticut, a solid rep in there. That's thank you, sir. I would yeah. love. I mean, we're open. Um, yeah, I'm gonna check out your website. I'm gonna see who's around. If there's anybody in there, I'll, we're, I'll, still I'll working on, we're still working on all the locations. Yeah, I'll do this again. Still working on basically making sure that you know, um, one, they get the proper instructor training. And yeah. the pandemic, actually, before the pandemic, we were already creating platform, and because of the demand from um another country other countries other continents mm. we got one here in the uk yes i was already working with uh um, yeah, that's incredible we were already working on zoom and teaching and creating a library i probably have i think last time i chatted with uh master ace we have about i believe 18 or 19 terabytes of materials in our library terabytes yes sir ah. and he's wow. not He's not even done with some of the stuff. That, that terabytes. <laughs> yeah. That doesn't yeah, include all those of don't know, that's um, <laughs> some, that's, of train, that's some of my training. Some of my training. I definitely found it here. Awesome. And then we got, all right, we've got another Joe. Tuan, Apollo, reverse engineer. Are you an engineer or something? You were going, you were thinking about being coming an engineer. Yeah, you're thinking yeah. of an engineer. Yeah. But it's always, that was always been my, so now I became a combat engineer. Okay. Is Joe wondering if, if you're a fitness instructor, actually, it's part of your job to reverse engineer things because when somebody asks, um, uh, go to you, basically, if they, if you ask you to design a, a program for them, you you are basically compelled to basically work it from a reverse engineering point of view as well. You need to understand it, yes. You see, Dean, that's why I told you about him. 
right? Yeah, yeah, right, right. That's why you said, hey, you know, I was going to go to school. We were talking about you, uh, Tom. We were talking about you earlier before you got on. Yeah, I think <laughs> it, it, it was all good, though. It was all good stuff. Is Joe under you? Is Joe associated with you, Joe Pascal? Sure. Joe had uh, had been training with us. Uh, oh, actually, when the pandemic hit, you know. Oh, uh, you know what? I think you mentioned that in an interview with him. I think yes. he did. And yeah. uh, basically, he got to. So during the pandemic, and I did a lot of stuff on Zoom to make people, you know, yes, they could not get in front of you and be able to, you know, to touch sticks or sure. it aren't. But what they got was the main thing I focus on the concept. Yeah, it's better than doing mm -hmm. nothing. Mm -hmm. oh, it is part of that. That is, that is important. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, you can't get anything out of Zoom classes. Yeah, you besides the physical really? thing, they have to get the concept anyway. So sure. Sure. that was my opportunity to give them the concept. So then, you know, after the pandemic, now we're all starting to get back together. Yeah, now, that's fantastic. I have a lot of my instructors are coming here at this facility. I don't know if you guys seen, um, show you guys a little bit of the facility. Yeah. And this is kind of like how we want to role model a lot of the Filipino Kali Academy. Actually, so yeah. we're, we're, I'm kind of done with the question. This has been phenomenal, by the way. Let's talk. Yeah. So if you want to show us the school, yeah. please do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Life tour. Yeah, life tour. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you guys a tour. Sure, I'm sure they would love okay. that. If you want, I can lower ourselves. If you want to do it, um, well, it's up to you guys, sir. Yeah, you might you might get a bigger window. When you yeah, first, yeah, yeah. that's the front door, and when you first come in, you'll see that's the backbone of what I do. The first thing, as soon as you come in, is you know, our Filipino Kali Academy with the Piti, and then let's see, make sure I have all that. And then, so I'm going to take you to a tour of the whole thing. So when you come into the door, this is what you see. Um, and then that's basically, we have shorts and t-shirts and that's our, um, that's our uh, compression clothing where they have the taping on the shoulder, taping on the knee. So helps people like uh, myself, young. It keeps us in, it keeps everything in place. <laughs> and our, the theme is always uh, Filipino. What I see in the Philippines, our flooring used to be this bamboo. But as you notice, I angle the bamboo so that I, well, you'll see it later on in a different angle. And then uh, the chairs that no back so that if you look at it from this angle, you can tell that it's angle on the 45 degrees so that when people sit down on this chair that has no back, they're paying attention to the kids that are training over there. As you can tell, that's our training, big training area. There is the Philippine flag and then the American flag. And when you look at it from the outside, it's the opposite. The Philippine flag is right behind the US and uh, the US behind the Philippines coming from the outside. This is our training area. And then here is where we have the tires. And also we have Lapu Lapu. And uh, that is one big thing that um, actually um, Bayani, uh, Joe designed for us. Uh, he puts uh, Lapu Lapu on one of my posts. And I have Guru Katie actually help me put that together um, on all the designing of the school, the design of this school, it's all help with by Guru Katie, uh, which you guys are having in the, towards the end of the month on uh, November 28th. See, put that there plus, and then I have a couple other, um, I have Chris also Morgan that helped finish those, uh, the sides because of the pandemic. And then this is our logo how I understood Piketty, I put it in the logo. And there's a huge explanation on, on that on YouTube. And of course, there's the Barong. And these are basically our windows in the Philippines are always used by a lot of uh, like uh, bamboo, Sinawali. These are all the Sinawali pattern. Okay, and then I put it there because usually in the Philippines, we just close that and put a um, curtain. And that was it, that was your window. And the floor is brown, our mat is brown, 
Um, and the reason why it's brown is because it represents the soil, the ground in the Philippines is not, and, and back in the days, and the black is the dirt. And over here on the mirror, you will see the Baha'i Kubo concept. So it, it made out of bamboo. So the Baha'i Kubo concept, we use that for, and the footwork is on top, the diamond footwork, um, diamond, the X footwork, the open triangle, the closed triangle, and that footwork over there, the Z, that's all the eight directional footwork and also the uh, strategy. And there is the logo. So everything that we have here, um, I apologize guys, if I'm making you guys dizzy. So everything that you see at the school has um, meaning. We don't just, um, I, we didn't just put it there just so that it would look good. We put it there so there's meaning behind it. No, it's an awesome school. Yeah. So yeah. The Kubo, when we were kids, we got to live on the, I mean, our house is so small that everybody's in one room. I, mm. I, I, I got to live in the province. Yeah. Um, I was, yeah. So I got the ex experience of, you know, um, eating with hands and just the soy sauce and rice. And, mm. you know, uh, we were living, my father came here first and he was sending $100 a month for us, for five kids, uh, four kids, five kids in the Philippines. Where's five of us? I have two mm. brothers um, who you guys are familiar with, Tohon Bobby. Uh, and also I have a younger brother who's also a martial artist and he is a phenomenal uh, martial artist as well. Mm. Um, and then my sister does martial art. I have two sisters um, and they both do. Wow. Yeah, wow. It really runs in the family now. Yeah, yeah that's for sure. <laughs> it's, yeah. Uh, you know, it's um, it, it has built my foundation or made my foundation so solid in addition to it's an it's addition to what my mm. parents gave us mm. the foundation and that helped us to be where we are now and yeah. honestly, it's a uh, it's been um a great journey and i would love to share with other people the journey that i have of of being able to get to where i am and hopefully they can do it. and i know my son will probably end up doing it much faster than i did yeah, but and, uh, but definitely as a result of you, though. You know what I mean? Yeah. And same thing. With, I have a lot of my students are already leaders in their own, mm -hmm. uh, in the in their own uh, organization. I have done that. Um, we have tons of people that have their own school. They have their own organization, mm -hmm. uh, which is you know, which is great. There's more power to them. There's plenty of people for everyone. Mm -hmm. um, That's true. Yeah, I mean, because yeah. really, a lot of our personality will not fit to the others. So, and, you know, to run a successful martial arts school, all you need is about 200 people. Yeah. In with you. And you'll be fine. With yeah, no. yeah. Wow. And that is, that, and that is a, a, not a lot. Especially in the area, if you have ninety thousand people that live, with yeah, depending population. on your city population. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yeah. you know, there, there's so that's why there's plenty of people for every, for mm -hmm. every, yeah, for every, yeah, yeah, exactly. My thing is yeah. just I, I really we, my staff and I really want to work and focus on the kids, mm -hmm. the school, and also in growing the instructors and trying to educate the instructors so they can be successful in what they do. Well, it sounds yeah. like you're doing it. You're doing a great job. Great job. Yeah, right. We still got a lot, yeah. a long way to go. Yeah, we have yeah. Your way, I think you're way ahead of many. So, we've been yeah. very, sir, I have to say we've been very blessed, and I have got to thank and my parents and everybody else that surround me. Mm. Uh, that really made such a great contribution because I would not mm. be where I am now if I didn't have the support of my family yeah uh my friends and also my instructors that training with me and all my students i mm. will not be wherever i am you know where i am and people that left me uh from before and started their own thing for one reason or another i just wanted to thank them and i wanted to thank them because i will not be where i am if it wasn't for them yeah 
Exactly. Yeah, maybe yeah. Through, yeah absolutely. It's mm -hmm. a positive, just it's a positive, positive way to look at things yeah. too. You know? yeah. Exactly. That's basically it. It's how you look at yeah. it. Everybody you know? has their own journey. It's how you look at things. Yeah. 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 And how you accept it. Yeah. There's always going to be a time where you're gonna have you're gonna separate ways. Yeah. But it's the same time, you know, it's, it's uh, good. It's what life is about and it's martial it's arts artists, artist, it, it exactly. really as um in an and I wanna be as uh true as I can as a martial artist. I yeah. wanna be represent mm. martial art mm. that when you say you do whatever it takes, you gotta do whatever mm. it takes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So. Wow, this has been, we're going on uh, time. Did you have anything? I mean, we're close to two hours. Yeah. Yeah. It just blew by. You promised me it wasn't going to go over two hours. <laughs> no, I know. I know. Uh, I, yeah. I feel. I feel. I promised it. I know. It, it just took off. It, things just started going. I, mean, I well, I my, um, my staff will stop me whenever I'm teaching. Sometimes I said, Okay, we only got 30 minutes left. Next thing you know, it's like next thing is an hour. hour. <laughs> <laughs> we, only three, we only got three minutes left, hour later. <laughs> it's great, you know. When we get up in time, it went by so fast. That means we're yeah, well, I really appreciate yeah, you coming on. Yeah, folks yeah, yeah. So this number we will have again to on Apollo, but with his brother. So that so oh. check this out. That could be December. That's gonna be a brilliant interview. Yes. Yeah, so. Yes. Oh, so by the way, sir. Them. Um, if I yes, if you mind, them. today is my uh, sister's birthday. My eldest. Oh, happy birthday! Oh. Happy birthday, oh. Atioli. Happy birthday. All yes. right. She is. Uh, <laughs> I'm not gonna tell you how old she is because she will kill me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't know women's uh, age. <laughs> if someone was here, he would say it, but that's <laughs> No, don't, don't, don't. No, don't, happy don't. birthday, Atioli. Happy uh, birthday, Atioli. All right. Happy birthday. Uh, from, F from, from, uh, from all of us in FMA discussion. FMA discussion, absolutely. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, yeah. I, I appreciate you coming on. Thank you so it's much. A great, yeah, great no. interview. Great interview. Her, thank mm -hmm. you so much. And um, like I said, uh, and some of the people I'm I'm looking at, some of the people that's there, guys. Thank mm -hmm. you for uh, the support. Yeah, brunch day right to the end. Yeah, thank you for watching. I truly mm -hmm. appreciate it, and I think we all have the same common denominator: is to basically uh promote and propagate the art and um to basically preserve as much as we can yeah the way that we can um all flourish learn and um and grow our beloved art and grow yeah. thank you yeah. so, thank you for what you guys do oh my god our pleasure and thank you for coming yeah. on i'm glad it, yeah. i'm glad it happened yeah. and december folks so you have not seen the last of Tuan apollo he will be Definitely. back in december with his yeah. brother Sir, we also have people from uh, Hong Kong. Oh, wow. Mushin. Uh, oh, wow. Singapore. Singapore, I'm sorry. No. I think, okay, okay. Yes. Yeah, it was great. Thank you, guys. Yeah. All right. Well, I appreciate it, sir, and we'll um, I'll be in touch for we'll December. Touch. Thank yes. you so much. Thank you, everyone, to all the students and uh, instructors that supported us. Thank you. Thank you for all your All right. You take care, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Pleased to meet Thank you. God. Yes. <laughs> Thank you guys. And yeah, we'll keep in touch. We'll keep in touch. Okay. You should come here in December. Second, December, December. second through December 5th. Oh, maybe we'll just bring you to Connecticut. Yeah, that too. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> I'm really wishing I'm 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 there. I'm not here right. across the pond. <laughs> yeah, come visit. Um, Tom, oh, yeah. come visit. I will do, definitely. Once everything is clear, I will do. All right. I will do. We go. I will do. All yeah. Right, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you, Thank everyone. You. Have a nice day. Bye. You too. All right. That wraps up a good one. So I yeah, know. I know. Tomorrow night. Two hours just basically flew yeah. really fast. That did go. Tomorrow night, part three, which is Tuhan Mel. At seven o'clock, same bat time, same bat channel, seven p.m. And that will be three in a row of PTK. <laughs> it's like a PTK week for you, Dean. Yeah, again, not with intention. It's just, not intention, uh, yeah, but must have been fate. 
I think so. I think yeah. so. I think so. So folks that, that tuned in, I appreciate it. Me and Guru Tom appreciate it. But again, if you've not subscribed to FMA Discussion, please do so. Please again, do so. Yeah. You'll be able to see this video and other great past episodes, and you will in turn, indirectly and directly, be helping us help people. All yeah. our monies that we receive from the channel go to charity in the Philippines. We actually give it away. We don't keep any of it. So if you subscribe, you are adding to what we can get to help people. So yes, yeah, FMA discussion on YouTube, just the way it's spelled out. Um, yeah. Please, if you haven't already, please, uh, please join. Yes, and also please leave a comment in the YouTube channel. Yes. We would love to hear from you. Yeah. Yeah. So again, all right. See you tomorrow. Uh, so we'll see you tomorrow at 7. Yeah, see you tomorrow at 7. Okay. All right. You take care. Thanks for joining me. Stay safe, everybody. All right. Thank you for joining us. Absolutely. Uh, all right, folks, signing out. So, yeah, tomorrow night, uh, episode 216, Tuhan Mel. Uh, and I think uh, Guru Royce, actually, I know Guru Royce will be joining him, and they're going to be doing some demos. So that's going to be, again, tomorrow night, um, and I'll be three in a row. All right. See you guys all tomorrow.